So you can start. Let's do that. <laughs> He's like, nope. <laughs> so we've, we've muted all of our questions. Okay. Now I can't see everybody, but you know, I can, see everybody. can they hear us? Yes. Can you hear us, Mike? He says yes. Yep. A we thumbs up if you can hear us. <laughs> all right. <laughs> great, 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 great. Okay, so we're gonna start right on time so we can get you out of here on time. Welcome to our first ever Zoom hot tub school. And uh, first of all, um, I think I know most of everybody, but I'm Audra. You're gonna see a lot of faces that you're familiar with from the store. We really appreciate your business, first and foremost. We want everybody to know that. And everyone who's attending, we're writing down your names and you're gonna be getting a coupon for 50% off your first filter for your new hot tub. Okay, we're gonna cover service, safety, maintenance and water care. And you have a ability to ask a question by typing a question and it comes over to us. And then we're gonna hit all the questions at the end. We have muted you. And uh, <laughs> that wasn't my idea, by the way. And, um, First person that we're gonna uh, talk to is Shauna. Shauna is our service manager. She just logged her fifth year here at Johnson's and we're really proud to have her. And she's the one you're gonna call if you ever need anything. Are you ready? Yeah. She's really nervous. Oh yeah. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Shauna. Like Audra said, I'm the service manager here at Johnson's. I am the one that you're going to call if you have any um, troubleshooting questions, warranty needs, or parts and service down the road. Um, I'm gonna touch on some uh, maintenance um, uh, things today to kind of help you keep your spa running the best that it can and uh, prolong the life of it. So firstly, um, your spa is going to have to be drained. Um, before draining, we do recommend that you use um, a product we have called System Flush. What this does is it's going to flush anything out of the lines of the hot tub. So if your water kind of got away from you or you have like some scaling, things like that, it's going to push it out so that when you refill it with your nice clean water, it's not going to, you know, get in there. So um, how often you should drain the hot tub kind of goes by... Um, you know, a few things, how often you're using it, how many people are using it. A good rule of thumb to go by is once every three to four months or once a season. Uh, you can um, also go by your TDS level, which is your total dissolved solids, and we can test that for you here. That is going to register the amount of particles that have dissolved into the water. Once it gets to a certain point, it just can't dissolve anymore and it's time to restart. Uh, you, you, over time, you'll probably be able to tell though, once it's time to drain it, the water's not gonna feel as nice. You are gonna have trouble um, getting it balanced or it might get cloudy and you just can't get it clean and it's just time to start over again. Um, how to drain your hot tub. Um, so Nordic and PDC both come with hose attachments. PDC is going to be on the front cabinet under your controls towards the bottom. Um, there's a little cap there, you unscrew it and hook your hose up to it. Nordic Hot Tubs is going to be on the inside of the panel. So you just take that front panel right off and there's a hose attachment on the inside. If you don't wanna do that, um, you can use a sump pump or you can also just use your hose as a siphon. And you're not gonna be able to get all of the water out regardless of which way you do it. You can go in and try to scoop it, but if there's a little bit in the bottom, it's not gonna hurt anything. Okay, and once your hot tub is empty, you're probably gonna wanna clean it out. The shell of the hot tub, you should never use any household cleaning products on. Uh, those can leave a residue behind, they can cause staining of your shell and just all kinds of issues. So always use something that's made specifically for hot tubs. We have a product called Off the Wall here. It works really nice, it gets off scaling and all kinds of stuff. 
um, the skirt of the hot tub, so the outside. Um, you can use a pledge on there. It gives it a really nice shine or just soap and water works too. Um, those are um, perma wood, so they're not gonna break down. They're not gonna rot, anything like that. And then the cover, kind of same idea as the shell. You don't want to use any household cleaners on that. It's going to break it down, cause it to deteriorate. So always use something made specifically for spas. And we have a product here called Ummers, and that gives it a really nice shine, and it also puts a layer of protectant on it. And so then the filter of your hot tub, um, you do want to rinse that out once a week. Um, just with water is fine. Once a month, you're going to want to chemically clean it. We do have spa guard filter cleaner here. Um, that's going to get all the grit and stuff out of it and uh, just help it work better. Um, when uh, we do suggest that you have an extra filter on hand, when you rinse it out weekly, put in the dry one. It lets the wet one um, dry out, it tightens back up, and it just is going to prolong the life of it. And those usually need to be replaced about once a year. Okay, and the last thing I wanna to touch on is uh, winterization. We do have some customers who like to shut their hot tubs down for the winter. Um, if, you're, if this is something you wanna do, um, we can definitely give you a walkthrough here in the store. We do also offer that as a service. We can come out and do it for you. You basically just wanna make sure all the water's out. You wanna blow out the lines, um, you know, loosen up your um, fittings on the inside so you know, if there is any water it can drain out, things like that but we're happy to help you with that if that's something that you're interested in. And that is pretty much all I have for you today. Um, you know, the other really important thing you need to do to maintain your hot tub is you know, keep really good water care, keep things balanced, and Kristen's gonna touch on that a little bit later. But right now, I'm gonna hand it over to Jen, and she's gonna go over some spot safety with you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Hello, I'm Jennifer. I've been working here at Johnson's for a very short time, but I've had a hot tub for a long time. Um, as wonderful as it is to soak in a hot tub, staying in the water too long at too high of a temperature can cause overheating, leading to nausea, dizziness, possibly fainting, and other health issues. So if you do have any health issues, such as high blood pressure um, or are taking any medications that might cause drowsiness, you wanna avoid using the hot tub or check with your physician and see what they say about uh, using the hot tub. Also, if you are pregnant, if you're a pregnant woman, you don't wanna get in the hot tub. Um, we also, for children, we wanna keep the temperatures in the hot tub uh, lower we only want to have the hot tub up to 99 degrees or 98 degrees for children under the age of 12 and they should only be in the hot tub for 15 to 20 minutes and should be supervised at all times you also want to make sure the children know to keep their head above water um, when they're in the hot tub and they should be sitting down not not a lot of horseplay in the hot tub i know they like to splash around and have fun but you want to make sure that they don't hurt themselves like on the seating or anything like that. And always keep the hot tub, hot tub covered when it's not in use. All of the hot tubs come with locking devices that you can use on the covers. And you wanna make sure they're locked if you have children around and you should make sure that the hot tub is in a secure area, have a gate or fence around it so that the children can't get in there unsupervised. Also, while I touched on pregnant women, um, you should check with your clinician if you do want to use a hot tub. Usually the clinicians will tell you to try to avoid it. If you do use it, try to keep your chest above the water level and limit the time in the hot tub, no more than 15 or 20 minutes. And if the temperature um, is above, the temperature should never be above 104 degrees Fahrenheit but you should try to use a lower temperature if you're, in, if you're pregnant and you do wanna use the hot tub. Usually below 100 degrees is more recommended for pregnant women um, and keep the water balanced, of course. So longer use, lower temperatures, as mentioned early, as I mentioned earlier, if 
majority of the hot tub users like to have their temperature between 100 and 102 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, it, you should limit your soak time in the hot tub to about 20 minutes. If you have it, if you want to have the hot tub up to 104 degrees, it's recommended to only be in there for 20 minutes at most. And I mentioned earlier, 98 degrees is safe to, safest for children. Um, it, you will become dehydrated if you're in the hot tub for 20 minutes. You usually lose approximately 12 ounces of sweat when you're in the hot tub. So you want hot tub or spa. So you want to drink at least 12 ounces of water prior to getting in the hot tub. I know some people like to have a nice cool glass of wine, but try to drink a 12 ounces or more of water before getting in and then possibly you can have your glass of wine but also drink 12 ounces or more um, after the wine because alcohol does de does dehydrate the body and expands the blood vessels and it can cause dizziness and heat exhaustion um, but also along with that never ever use glass around the hot tub glass is very hazardous use your plastic bottles or cups. And nowadays there are Yeti and other companies have out those lovely little wine glasses type shaped things, the stemless wine glasses that you can use in the hot tub. Um, also never use street clothes in the hot, hot tub or spa. Use bathing suits or nothing at all, your choice. Um, <laughs> Maintain the appropriate levels of chemicals in your hot tub or spa. Low levels of chlorine or bromine can lead to folliculitis. And if your tub is slippery, it could mean that your sanitizer level is too low. And you can bring a sample of water in to be analyzed so you can discover what the proper chemicals with the correct amounts is needed to maintain a healthy spa or hot tub. The level of safety, can, the level of safety will depend on you. If you're keeping up with the maintenance and health of the water and always follow standard safety protocols, you should truly enjoy a safe experience in your hot tub or your spa without any issues. And I'd like to introduce Kristen as next, and she will be going over the water care. <laughs> there we go. Hello, everybody. All right, so I'm doing um, probably the one thing that everybody gets a little bit nervous about um, or uncertain about um, with their tub, and that's your chemistry and water balance. So I'm going to try to make it nice and simple for you, um, and I kind of want to start with doing a system. So every week, you should be doing a three-step system, um, and that's a little bit, I might have a fourth one in there for you too. Um, so the first one's going to be sanitizing. That's your most important step of the week. Um, and for some of you, it might be something you do throughout the week. So I'm going to go over our two main products that everyone um, here is probably using with their tub. Um, the first is going to be your um, chlorinated concentrate. So if you have a Nordic hot tub, um, they recommend chlorinated concentrate to go with your shell. And what you want to do with that is um, basically use that for killing bacteria, killing viruses, um, and keeping that nice and clean and clear for that. Um, now, to maintain a good sanitary level, you need to be registering three to five parts per million um, chlorine in your water. Now, we would look at our test strip, or if you could bring that in here for us to test. I'll go over that a little bit later. Um, and you want to maintain that constantly. So if you do have a moment where it's gotten low or it goes to zero, it's really important to add that concentrate to bring that back up because that's a moment where you could have um, bacteria growth, which we do not want. Um, if you have a PDC tub, they recommend using bromine with their line. Now, bromine and chlorine are very similar um, products, but they do work a little differently. So your bromine is in the form of tablets, and these you'll use particularly with a floater. And these you're gonna find um, should last you almost a week. However, in some cases, you might be adding them a little more frequently, maybe every four days or so. Um, but again, you're maintaining about that same level, that three to five parts per million to maintain um, your water clarity and your water sanitizing. Um, the next step we're gonna go to is oxidizing. Now this gets a little confusing because a lot of people, um, you know, what's the difference between a sanitizer and an oxidizer? 
So your sanitizer is your killing bacteria, but your oxidizer is actually breaking down impurities. So that means, for example, body oils, lotions, skin cells, detergents, sweat, all that stuff that gets in our water. Um, we want to gas that off. We want to break that down further because that's going to bog down our sanitizer and make it not as efficient. Um, so we have two products you can use for that. We have an enhanced shock. And that is going to actually have not only the oxidizer for you, but also a little boost of chlorine. The other side is Spa Shock, which is a slightly different um, formula. However, will still oxidize for you. So if you have either one of these products, you want to be using these once a week. The dosing is going to be per how many gallons you have in your tub. And this is certainly something you can add more frequently than once a week. So for example, you can add this um, after you've had company, after you've used it for a prolonged time. And I do recommend when you add any of these products, make sure you are opening the cover and leaving it open for at least 20 minutes because you will have a reaction when you create um, this additional chemical uh, in your water and you want that to be allowed to get out of your tub. You don't wanna have that lingering under your cover and building up in there either. So with that oxidizer step, the third step you're gonna go to, oh, that's my balancers. But I do wanna to mention too, before we jump into balancers, um, we also have stain and scale control. So this is also part of a remedy section. So you wanna use this once a week for protecting from scale. Uh, but that being said, I do wanna jump into balancers next. Um, Cause we'll go over that in the remedy section. So balancers, we're going to be adjusting and this is more of an as needed step. Um, so what you're doing weekly is going to be a bit separate from this. This is you're going to be checking weekly, but not always adding weekly. Um, the way you check this again, test strips or bringing it into us for testing. And I'm going to go over kind of what each of these products does and what it means for your tub. So the first one's alkalinity and we have an alkalinity increaser you can use now. Um, your alkalinity is actually um, uh, not tied in with your pH when you're talking about water. Um, so your alkalinity is a measure of your carbonate or bicarbonate levels. It protects your pH level from adjusting too much from different things that get into the water. So for example, um, if you have a low alkalinity level that may allow your pH to jump around a lot. If you have a high alkalinity level, you could be finding your pH is getting pulled up with it too. So we wanna keep that in balance um, because that not only protects our tub, but it also protects our skin. Um, it also makes our sanitizer work more efficiently. So we do have an increaser for alkalinity, but you'll notice there's no decreaser for alkalinity. How you do that is you actually will use a pH decreaser. This you use in a small amount over several days to slowly hack away at or start breaking down the alkalinity level. This can be a bit tricky. I highly recommend um, bringing us in about a water bottle's worth of a sample so that we can test it out and give you the recommended dose and timeline to bring that alkalinity back down. The second step, of course, is the pH itself. So your pH is your potential hydrogen level. This is a measure of how acid or how base your water is. Um, ideal levels when you're looking at your hot tub are going to be 7.4 to 7.6. Um, and then I did forget to mention your ideal levels for your um, alkalinity is going to be 125 to 150. Again, on your test strips, they will give you a bracket of ideal levels too, and that's where you're aiming for. Um, so going back to your pH adjustment, if you're too low when you test your pH, that means you're more on the acid side. That means you're going to have more corrosion possible. You're going to have the possibility of um, getting a rash and also diminishing your sanitizer level quicker than need be. So ideally you want to, if you see it's low, you want to bring that up with a pH increaser. On the other end of the spectrum, if you are too high in pH and you have a level that's above that 7.6, um, you may find that your water feels a bit chalky. You might get more scaling on the surface, but also in your lines and on the heater. 
and it can feel uncomfortable and still uh, make it not as efficient for your sanitizer. So again, if you need that to be brought the other direction, there's a pH decreaser that we can use to bring that down for you. The very last one I have for balancers is gonna be your um, calcium level. So a lot of times um, when you bring in your water, I know a lot of people refer to their water as being hard or they might have a softener. Um, the calcium level is what we're really paying attention to when we look at the hardness, um, not just the metals and calcium. The metals I'll discuss a little bit later. So the calcium level, we do need to have around that um, 150 to 200 range, ideally. Um, we want a certain level of calcium. So if you have a softener and you fill it with your softener and it helps take out some of your metals, you do wanna test it and make sure your calcium level is in the good range. Too low of calcium can lead to etching of your hot tub as your water tries to find a balance or a medium level. It tries to find it from other areas. So that would be your shell, that would be your lines, that would be your pumps and other equipments um, that you find on your tub. So ideally, um, you wanna increase that should you need it. And if you have a higher level of calcium, there isn't really a way to remove that with a product um, from a hot tub standpoint, but we do want to mediate it. So one of the ways we do that is we make sure that you are using your stain and scale weekly so that you can keep the scaling off of the tub, keep that dissolved in the water. And um, you're going to find, you know, if you do get too high of the calcium level, a lot of times it's just your source water. Um, so it's not to be a concern. But if you don't typically have high calcium, perhaps maybe you've added too much calcium, you can also dilute your water down with fresh water that has a lesser calcium level to bring that level down for you. So that's another way we can adjust your, um, your balance or your calcium levels. And all of these work together to make sure that you have comfort, you're protected, and you have clarity in your water too. Because for some of these, if your sanitizer isn't working well, you're gonna run into some um, hazy water to even cloudy water in those scenarios. Um, on our last one here, I think we have the remedies. We'll pop back to those. There we go. So um, for specific needs, um, for example, um, you might have some water that is not um, staying clear for you, but your balance looks really nice. Um, that can sometimes be filter related. You may have very small particles that aren't getting filtered out. Um, so what you can use, and we have it as something you can use on the weekly basis, is water clarifier. Make sure you don't overdo your water clarifier. This can be overdosed. So once a week is the most you want to add something like this. And um, you tend to only need to add a few ounces, um, again, per how many gallons uh, you have in your spa. Um, this is also gonna be something that basically takes those particles, kind of gums them together and helps your filter grab them. Um, if you are using a um, sanitizer that uh, in conjunction with a, perhaps a mineral stick, um, you want to make sure you do not use water clarifier because this will gum up those beads. So if you are using any of the mineral systems in addition to your sanitizer, uh, make sure you're not using the water clarifier with it. The secondary um, thing I run into with um, tubs is when maybe you first fill it and you put in your sanitizer, you oxidize it, you run into some water staining or even shell staining. Um, you may see a green, you might see a bit of a brown, orange, or um, yellowing color. And many a times this is from uh, metals in our source water, whether it be copper or um, iron or manganese. Um, these basically get reacted uh, and react with your oxidizers mainly. And you do find that that's where you get that color from. It was always in the water, but now we can see it. So your stain and scale control can help you a lot with that. Um, it helps your filter grab that metal out of your water so that you do reduce that staining. Um, you'll probably find that you'll need to use a filter cleaner in order to strip those metals out. But um, if you use that in conjunction with maintaining a proper pH level, that will help usually within a day or two clear that up 
for you. If you do add water and need to top off your water, you will find that you'll need to add an extra dose of the stain and scale to keep that metal out of the water. So your last specific water remedy, I don't have a picture of, but it is in the same turquoise cap it's your anti-foam. So if you do run into lots of foaming in your water, um, it can be from a few things, whether it be low calcium or may need a filter cleaning. But in the meantime, you can use this anti-foam to cut down on your foaming levels so that you have time to adjust anything else you need and still enjoy your spa. Um, and of course, all of this, the way we do uh, checking this, the way we keep up on it is using your test strips and or bringing in a sample to us. And I recommend testing it once a week at home and bringing it in at least once a month just to get a good checkup. But of course, when they're a new spa, you can bring it in every week if you want. You can bring it in every other week until you feel comfortable and you feel like you've kind of gotten um, how yours is going to work because everybody's will be used differently. They have different source water. You're gonna have a little bit different um, grouping of, of how much and how frequently you use these products to make sure that it works properly for you and, and, um, and your household. And I think that is mine. Yep, and we're gonna have some questions. Oh, and I'll give it over to Audra. You stay there. No, 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 no. Okay, we're gonna unmute everybody in case you have any questions. Hang on for a second. Um, I see one, one question anonymously came in that says, how do we drain uh, the water um, in the hot tub in the winter when everything's frozen? Well, a lot of times um, if it's in the middle of January and it's 20 degrees out and uh, you don't feel like draining the hot tub and cleaning it out, a lot of us will just sort of lower the level a foot, foot and a half and then add fresh water, kind of buys you a little bit of time so you don't have to empty out the whole thing. Does anybody have any questions? Oh, here, no, we just did that. I'm, I'm, we're unmuting you, hang on. Any other questions? Uh. <laughs> okay. So we don't know how to do that. If you can unmute yourself and you have a question, that would be wonderful because we're having a little technical glitch here and I don't know how to unmute you. First time, first time Zooming. Any, any questions at all? I can see a few people. Uh, when I have a question. Oh, oh good, I hear you. It's Suzanne, thank you. Oh, oh yeah. Okay, sorry. Uh, yeah, I have a question. So I noticed that my water level is getting a little low and it's maybe like now it's about an inch above the highest jets in my hot tub. I have the PDC hot tub. Um, so I know I have to put some more water in it soon. Um, okay. my, so in other words, how, like how much water should I put? In? I don't want too much because I'm sure I don't want, you know, water up to my chin. Um, but I know I need to put more in. Should I put the water in before I, because I put my chems in on Sunday. That's my day to, to do the, the once a week chems. Um, so should I put the water in first and then like do the chems and then do the check? Um, um, I, I, I imagine that would probably would be the, my, makes the most sense to me. I, would, and I, have, I have a lot of iron in my water. Okay. So. Anytime you add water to your hot tub because you have an iron issue or anybody who has a metal problem, always up your stain and scale control. Your PDC spa is kind of bigger. You might want to put uh, two to four ounces of stain and scale control extra every time you add water. Because it's a what, smaller problem. Well, it, still, depending on how much iron you have, what will happen is if you don't add that um, stain and scale control, those are sequestering agents and chelating agents. And they're gonna pull that iron out of the water so that when you add your oxidizer, you won't have a discoloration. Oh, okay. so, put, so add your okay. water first. And the nice thing about the PDCs is they have the skimmer that has a, a suction that has about five inches. Um, uh, you have a lot of vari variability in the, in the height of the water. 
So you can go as far down as that lowest hole and it'll still function well. But to answer your question, I would go ahead and um, add the water first, add your stainless scale control, and you should wait 24 hours before you add your sanitizer to avoid any staining or discoloration. Oh, okay. So wait 24 hours before adding the what? You add your stainless scale control, and then you need to wait 24 hours before you add either a shock or a sanitizer or bromine or chlorine, because those are the, the oxidizers, and the oxidizers are what um, are going to change the iron to like a brown color. If you have copper in your water, your, uh, your water okay. will turn green and so on. Okay. All set? Is there okay. any other, any other questions? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a negative. Are we all set? Yeah. Um, so say hi to Nicole. She's been over here running all our graphics. <laughs> Thank goodness that we have young people here that know how to do this Zoom stuff. Thank you, everybody. Hope everyone has a good night. Thanks for Thank you for your information. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thanks thank for your you. business. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.